the director, executive director of Galeria de la Raza, and I really want to thank you for your comments. I think just having side note and that's really inspirational in what we're doing. Um, I represent an organization that has been in operation for 48 years in the Mission District that was founded during the Chicano Civil Rights Movement as a platform, an alternative space mm -hmm. to have a community um, reflect their ideals and their wants and um, and to shape their community and it started through what we engage in currently, artivism. Mm -hmm. So we talked about art <coughs> and activism operating in separately in silos, no, we merge those two. So we engage artists in, from all over the Bay Area, internationally as well, we're an international platform for interdisciplinary practice of visual art, performance or whatever art it is that is responding to the needs of community. So we host a series of exhibitions. We have a the first public mural project that happened in the US came out of Galeria de la Raza and we still have the platform which was, now, now it's the digital mural project that um, showcases five to six artists throughout the year on issues that pertain to sort of human rights. We believe arts is a human right and we continue to create space so that that is um, reflected, you know, practiced, and um, we you know, work with emerging artists, established artists. Really, it's a way to continue to be an arm of community development to have it reflect what we want moving forward. To think about that, you know, futurity. What does it mean? And um, you know, I have a quote that best describes what we do at Galeria, and I'm going to read it. A little bit of a, it's two quotes actually. Um, and um, in 2017, we showcased a exhibition titled uh, Queer Us, Purely the One Thing Queer Us, and it was a exhibition documenting the LGBT movements from Latin America, Mexico into the US, and what were the movements that sort of were happening parallel that were around human rights, and that this issue that we are approaching is nothing new, it's all encompassing human rights, and arts is one of them. So. To really give you a, a, the two quotes that really represent the values of what we do, one starts, if going home is denied me, then I will have to stand and claim my space, making a new culture, una cultura mestiza, with my own lumber, my own bricks and mortar, and my own feminist architecture. That's from Borderlands, La Frontera, from Gloria Saldúa. The other piece that really, really resonates with every day with the work that we do um, at Galeria is since we're all sort of queer until proven straight now there. <laughs> <laughs> is that, you know, a queer aesthetic frequently contains blueprints and schemata of a forward dawning fraturity. And this is from uh, Cruising Utopia by Jose Esteban Munoz. So we really is about um, creating and protecting and cultivating placekeeping, um, a community that has been um, informing and shaping this this district and that right now it's feeling under attack, that's our main one priority to protect not only the institutions but the people that make the city, you know, the diverse, that represent the diversity and purify it. So that's been the focus of our work um, in the last, at least since my sort of tenure in terms of moving into the future. And you were telling me earlier that the next exhibition that's coming in is a 37 yes. artist? Uh, our next exhibition is titled Comidas Medicina, and it is featuring 34 artists 34. with, no, 37 artists with 54 art pieces. Um, and we're looking at concepts of decolonizing our um, diet, decolonizing our way of life, and, and honoring ancestral knowledge that has been passed on for generations and generations that often gets targeted because of either migration and you know, the, the change of, of migration, what happens with that. So it is a it was a national call out. We received over 157 <coughs> proposals and we had to you know, pare it down to 37 artists. So this is going to be a really exciting show. Amazing. And it also might be one of our last exhibitions that we host at our historical site where we've been in operation for 46 years of the 48 years that we've been um, open. Um, as our, because of the economic changes in the neighborhood, our rent was <coughs> doubled um, just six weeks ago. We're in an active negotiation, so no panic. We're <coughs> negotiating. But it is, we've been working at this for a while. We, and part of that, that's what sort of, uh, uh, we're focusing on really finding um, ways to not only protect the institutions but the people and so we've been partnering with local organizations like uh, the Mission Economic Development Agency, the Tenderloin Neighborhood Development Corporation, 
for-profit developers to really challenge and to sort of say, how are we going to create an ethos that responds to community, mm -hmm. to the legacy that's been there. So there is a lot of things that are in the works, but it is a really important moment to sort of take on and like take inventory of what's in your neighborhood and who's operating, who's making things happen, because all of it is really right now, sadly, you know, it could be just, you could be displaced. And so we want to think, we're no longer thinking of the three to 10 year sort of strategic plan. We are being bold and saying we want 50 to 100 years moving forward mm -hmm. um, because it is important that it doesn't matter how cities change, the community is always going to be here. We need to honor that legacy. We've been the ground zero for Central American, Latino, you know, African sort of movements of, around displacement, mm -hmm. and so we want to protect that. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Magnificent. Good segue into the, the next topic that um, um, I wanted us to talk a little bit about, um, and that is the challenge of um, you know holding queer space in uh, in our communities now, and what does it mean to create that queer space and maintain that and sustain that, and um, there you know there are so many forces that seem to distract us from that uh, purpose or to uh, uh, intend to thwart us uh, from our efforts. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious um, um, from to hear from all of you on you know the challenges that you are facing in order to um, remain in in, San, in the San Francisco Bay Area community making making queer art. What are some of the forces that you're reckoning with? Yeah. Well, I first have to sort of acknowledge that we when the organization that I work for, that, you know, that has sort of shaped me into my politics and moving forward wasn't an organization that identified as a queer institution. We, again, we were founded during the civil rights movement as a brown, black, sort of centered space to offer um, artists of color a platform. <coughs> so it has been through an evolution of artists that have brought these ideas and have been our partners and sort of directing the, the vision of the institution that have forced us to really create space to see ourselves reflected in that. And so I, was, I have to say that the work that I get to do now is really, I stand in the shoulders of elders, elders that really sacrificed a lot of time, that even if it wasn't queer aesthetics that they were um, pushing, that, that they allowed us for um, that space. And so I want to acknowledge the, our community recently had the, the loss of Renee Yanez, who was the one of the co-founders, mm -hmm. and really was the strongest ally to us when we um, started pushing in the late you know 80s early 90s on creating the first exhibition that was queer based in galleria was in 1992. so it was well far into the organization fast forward to 2015 in the meantime all this conversation was happening artists were coming in and then we decided that for pride month we would showcase a um, queer billboard mm -hmm. and it was depicting um sort of latino the, the chicano cholo latino aesthetic from a queer perspective, and you would have thought we were, you know. You got pushback? Oh, we had a lot of pushback. So that was one of our, our push, internal like community pushbacks. But I also want to say that it's, it was a moment for us to rise and to say, actually, it's an educational moment. So we made it our job, not only, although those are some of the maybe uh, forces that are fighting against us, mm -hmm. what we saw is that we've been in community forever. We're <coughs> nothing new. So it was a moment of education. We had to stand our, you know, dig our heels and say, no, we've been here. A lot of these artists that have been here are your, you know, community healers as well. They're your community sort of organizers. And we had to bring, we had to have a step back moment of reflection to say, how do we really, you know, sew the complete piece together and present it? So that's what prompted a series of queer exhibitions. We're calling them queer, but they were just exhibitions that were informing of historical, of knowledge and connection to, our, to our reclaiming um, to spirit, reclaiming the sort of um, folks who have been in community that have been erased because of colonization, because of patriarchy, because of all these things that have been, you know, those elements. So we don't think of it as a single isolated um, force, you know, that's, a, that's objecting our, our work. I think it's all about going back to human rights mm -hmm. and going back to the art and in essence, that, you know, we, we demand space and that we're gonna be here. So that's one force. The other force is the other elements of, of you know, economies of scale at the current time. You can't deny that we're all feeling the pressure. If folks cannot find equitable housing and 
work and get paid, then how are we supposed? How are they supposed to sustain and dream and think and create work? It's impossible. And our job as an institution is that we don't. It's it's not. I don't want to make it an issue. It's like we proudly do it, but it is a challenge because not only are we curating exhibitions, you know, fundraising for it. Now we're trying to like raise the institution from the ground up and create space that is so important that nobody's thinking about when we at City Hall when they're talking about creating housing, when they're talking about, you know, equitable, equity. Well what does that mean? I don't want to be in a building where I'm looking at, you know, Eurocentric art that doesn't represent us. Sure. You know, so those are the some of the forces that I think we're um, I don't think we're I think we're managing them and I think we're being proactive. I want to say we're speaking to power because we understand what that is and what it's going to take to stay in our communities. Yes, yes. I wanted to take just a little time to talk about the healing forces of the work that we do and sort of how um, that is integrated into the work that, um, that all of you present in your various um, disciplines. Is it a conscious choice? Is it just sort of a natural byproduct? Um, how does that <coughs> manifest itself in terms of healing our, our cells and our, our communities. Any thoughts about that? There's an equation that did say you follow it. There, there isn't. Mm -hmm. I think healing is a very personal and something that even ourselves, like myself, I'll speak for myself, it's a challenge on the day to day, whether I eat breakfast well, whether I'm sleeping well because mm -hmm. I'm up at night thinking of the lease or because I'm, you know, it just, mm -hmm. so I think it has to manifest um, as a kid. Yeah, it does manifest very different at <coughs> different times. Um, but what we do know, and we keep that in mind is, I mean, it's understanding that we have elders that, to, that we can go to and that have been here before, that, it, that along all this, we see also that we fight for joy that joy is what gives us healing, right? It's the joy of being so reflected, it's the joy of having, for me personally, elders that I can go call and say like, I'm just like, literally I did this when I was speaking at the rally to keep the families together. I was really conflicted on the lineup of who were the speakers because of political dynamics that were happening and I'm sitting there like, I'm gonna pull out, I'm not gonna do it, I'm just, I was like, I'm gonna be radical, I'm gonna go on my own and then I was like, wait, okay, my, what, okay call somebody so I have to pick up the phone call an elder just like here's what I'm struggling with and I know that I have a privilege of being able to do that and I know not everybody does so we try to also replicate that and create that space for others to be able to find it in the work that we do and being day to day there but it is it looks very different today might look like a call to an elder today might look like I slept well this week um, we try to be very vocal as a team. I'm going to talk about the entire team because it, it really, we are always riffing off of one another. Mm -hmm. We know when somebody's not, you know, we try to encourage a healthy conversation around mental health mm -hmm. for us in our, in our space. Mm -hmm. um, we know that we also don't have the answers and that there's moments that we have to just sort of sit back and also just, you know, understand that we don't have all the tools, but it is a complicated one. I, mean, I think what keeps us there is that joy though. It's the joy that we dare dream that we belong. Yeah. It's the joy that we create by saying, we're gonna see ourselves on those walls. It's the joy of seeing a young person walk through and like dream of an idea and two years later have a show. Mm -hmm. It's the joy of like being able to walk in the space with my partner as a queer woman of color. It's the joy of having my friends that can show up there. So I think it's really, that to us has been really a key to creating community, a key to healing together. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't have all the answers. It's not always done, per, you know, perfect. But it's a, it's what allows us to dream and to continue to show up. That we have dignity, respect, meals to eat together, and love, really. And, the, and, and that's what for us it looks like. So, this next exhibition will be around food. Yes. Food means joy to a lot of folks and yes. healing. And you know, and I think that that's the reason why we wanted to have an exhibition that not only looked at Latin American sort of practices, but we're looking at other immigrant communities and how their connection to food brings them together or, or organize. So for us in this next exhibition, you're gonna love, find a lot of food. You're gonna find a lot of conversation around decolonization. You're gonna find a lot of that. And so it is rooted in also claiming ancestral practices that heal us. And so that's just for this show. For the next party, it'll be a good dance. 
So just you know, it just looks very sort of different. Changing and yeah. that's that's the that is the joy of it.